Hey harmonizers, here is another little Dulcie update so you can see what she's doing. This is in Vermont where she's wearing a surf single for the first time. And that is because I wanted to try that for our freestyle, get her started on some long lining. I definitely find that the more a horse long lines, the better they transition into riding under saddle because they get to learn all that stuff from the ground before they get going. So this is her first time uh, wearing that and trying some of that long lining and before I even do the long lining I'm just asking her to lunge with the sur single on and so she's a little bit unsure about moving with it on she let me put it on just fine and it is done up very loose to start with not loose enough that she could put a hoof through it you don't want to have it be dangerous that they you know if she were to kick up at it or something like that that she could get her foot through it but definitely um, not super snug or anything like that. And so this is a look at her first time kind of getting going. You can see I'm asking pretty polite. She moves a little bit. She's going to get a little cookie there. One of the things that we want to be careful about is that we gradually introduce the horse to the girth. That it doesn't just kind of sneak up on them. And that we don't teach them to buck and explode by overwhelming them and, and making that a big deal. So it's like moving her up a little bit, a little bit, just gonna get another cookie there and rewarding her for trying and not having a big reaction. If we can avoid the horse learning about bucking and bronking and all that kind of stuff all together, then it's gonna be make for a much safer horse under saddle in general because we'll just never have pushed them to that point it won't even be in their bag of tricks, so to speak. It won't even be in the repertoire of things they think they should do or that they resort to doing. And the more we practice being calm and being patient and using our brains to think through puzzles, the more that the horse is going to be like that. So we really want to try to avoid those types of behaviors. So you can see I'm doing lots of little progressions where we started with a little bit of moving. Now I'm asking her to trot full circles before getting a cookie, asking her to go by the other horses and stuff like that, getting her a little cookie there. And so then this is me hooking up the long lines, just showing you that I did it slow. So this is actually sped up in times four speed and it still looks kind of slow as I do it, which just kind of gives you an idea of how slow I really did do that. And then starting in with a little bit of the turning and getting her used to the feel of that. You can see Newton's in the background with Sarah doing some lunging work and doing some fitness work and stuff. So she's getting his little booty going. And Dulcie is going to be doing some long lining. So here's a little look at in the beginning, just asking her to go and turn and try things. And she's a little bit kind of stuck. She's not really sure she's supposed to go. And I'm just trying to politely encourage her to try. And she gets the rope kind of turned around on her. I use the right rein to turn her back around. But then she kind of spooks and continues right and goes off. So that's an example of her kind of getting out of the long lines. Not ideal. But it happens sometimes. So then this is me uh, kind of sorting things out. And then going to try again on this side and you can see how she's doing and you can see how slowly I'm training her if you can compare her to what Newton was looking like there and slow and patient is really just super key so here's now me in real time asking her to go forward and we're just doing little bits of go forward and stop when horses are long lining they typically get most upset when you go to stop them because they feel the rain coming behind them and they feel it touch their butt and that's a little intimidating that their butt's getting a little squeeze as you're asking them to stop so essentially we're just kind of repeating the task praising her for doing a good job reassuring her that we're not actually asking her to go forward when she feels that rope on her butt by accident and that uh, we're going to be calm and patient for that so this is sped up four times because it's a pretty slow process it's a lot of turning you can see she's getting a lot of cookies as she figures it out and then 
she does a, a little bit of backup. I turn her, we go different places. And as she starts to get it and understand those turns and she listens, then she's getting cookies along the way. And so here, just doing that again, making turns. And sometimes I start with one rein that's kind of as a lunge at the center. And then only the opposite rein is hooked through the surcingle, so that way it's not super confusing for them. It can combine it with the lunging task, so it's a little bit more similar. And then we go from being really scared and nearly sitting, like if you look back, it looked like she was kind of sitting, she was so worried about the rope behind her back, to now she's just going around really nicely at the walk. I just, I love her brain. Her brain is super amazing in terms of, you know, she was pretty worried about this at the start of this session, but she stays in that calm thinking mode. She really tries to solve those puzzles and figure out what the heck is she asking for today? And I'm like, all right, Delcy, let's give this a go. And we're trying these little turns, these little serpentines, making the little turns without going to the rail, which is pretty tricky. And she's trying to figure out where are we supposed to go? And when you're handling the long lines, the real key is to make that super duper clear. So if you correct too soon, it's going to be confusing. If you're too much with both hands, it's going to be confusing. The horse really needs to feel, where is that open door? Where am I supposed to go? And like here she's lunging kind of close to me, doing a little change of direction there. She'll have to go by the other horse that she kind of got stuck on there as we were coming around. And uh, get her going with that little trot again. Just trying to stay out of her way and help her understand that when she's following that direction of where I'm wanting her to go, then the corrections stop happening. But even when I do correct, because she's learning something new, I've got to do it really softly, not too often. Can't be too picky. You got to think of it as if you were learning any new skill. If somebody got too picky with you, like let's say you were learning to read and you were pronouncing some things a little bit wrong, if they get after you over all of those little things, it's just going to be too much and you'll give up on reading. But if it's just one point of advice uh, and you do it in a kind way, then that's no big deal. You can kind of think about that one thing and you can get it better. And it's kind of the same way with horses that we can't be over picky in the beginning. We just have to kind of choose the general direction and speed that we're wanting to go but if the trot is a little bit too fast or maybe she's bending a little bit too much or whatever it is we can work up to that but when we're first introducing the language so to speak as if we were reading a book then we're going to really prioritize what it is that we're going to correct if we need to correct it how we're going to correct it so that way we're not uh, making our horse angry during that process because that's going to be really key you see, she's going to earn another little cookie here. So she's earning cookies for going forwards, for going backwards, for going side to side. So she doesn't really know when that's going to be. And then here's another little clip of her doing her bow, which is something that I was been working on. I'm going to try to have a bow at the end of her performance and really wanted her to go down on the one knee like that. So that took a little bit of time to be able to get that accomplished, but ultimately we did. And I'm super happy about it. And then this is a pretty big achievement here is having Evelyn feed her a cookie and having, you know, I'm actually comfortable with that because Dulcie actually used to pin her ears at anybody who wasn't me and used to give them what we called grumpy face. So this is pretty exciting that now she's taking cookies and got some happy ears. So thanks for watching, guys.